is this going to be an issue? No, nope. not at all. Um, so let's just get us started. Hi, Lissa, it's Jana, and I'm here with Yvonne. Is it Rosney? Rosney. Rosney. Let me yeah. just change this so we... Perfect. Um, and I'm just going to get her intro read right in, <clears throat> clear my throat a little bit, <clears throat> and we will get going. Um, okay, so three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I'm here with um, Yvonne Rosny. Yvonne is an English-born, Irish-bred New Zealander. Yvonne has lived and worked and relocated many times in the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand, which eventually brought her to the world of coaching. She knows all about highs and lows and needing to stand in your space. This coupled with being qualified as a coach on a solution-based, emotionally intelligent, and positive, psychologically based. She will stick by you while you and your loved ones work through your own journey needs. When I, I got to tell you, when I met Yvonne, I had never heard of a coach doing what she does. And honestly, it's something that's so needed because what she does is help you through something that could be very traumatic. So um, I love that you're here today, Yvonne. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Jana. I was just delighted when we connected and basically, basically we couldn't get off the phone to each other when we first chatted. So I'm just really delighted to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I know you're going to see a lot more of her too. So I'm really excited to have her here. Well, one of the reasons that um, before I get into the craziness that you do, like that is just so <laughs> unique that I want you to share your story of hope with all of us, if you don't mind. Sure. I actually have, because I am different anyway, I do actually have a double hope in my story. So my story is uh, along the lines of I, as you've um, kind of said in the intro, I've relocated loads of times. So, you know, one would think, yep, yeah, got that licked. No worries. Let's relocate again. Got it sorted. And that was kind of the story that was inside my own head. You know, I've got this. No worries. Um, what I didn't realize back when I tell you my story that I know now is that each relocation is actually a unique story in and of itself because it is at that particular present moment in time with that particular set of circumstances and emotions with it. So even though you may have history of relocating previously, you can bring experiences with you, but it's never quite the same. So going back five years or so, um, my latest relocation was one of the toughest in my life and it didn't matter how many times I'd relocated before it did not prepare me for what I was going the journey I was going to have to go through so uh, back then I was living in New Zealand and my life was all peachy ducks in a row everything was just great except life threw a curveball and when the wheels started to fall off they fell fell off pretty good with me so I lost my career that I was, that I really loved doing, which really knocked my self-esteem and my relationship of 18 years was really going through some tough patches and I was desperately trying to work it through um, with my partner. And then to add on to that, my, my mum had had a couple of significant medical situations and it was then that I realized how far away from home I really was. So my parents are Irish, but we live in Manchester in the UK. And it's, they were the, like the catalyst of when the wheels were really falling off. And this is a point where I really think it's really poignant to explain counseling to coaching because boy, I needed counseling. I got counseling and it was the best thing I ever did. And um, I guess my first hope is about when you really th when you really think you're down on your luck, when you really think you're looking down that black hole of depression. You you believe me. If you don't believe anything, just believe that you will you will see daylight again. And and on that note, if you end up needing to see three or four counsellors to get one that fits with you, that gets you, that's totally okay as well. Yeah. So. I did all of that and you know I'm really proud of the fact to be able to share that story and to say that my counsellor was amazing and she helped me to brush myself off get out of that black hole and stand up again where you actually feel that you're standing on something solid instead of it all being just fluffy and not grounding 
So great, right? First hope was brilliant. It's like I'm back up and I'm at it. And, but then my second hope came when it was like, well, that's great, but I still had all these decisions to make. What's happening with work? What's happening with my personal life? What's happening with family life? So I still had to make those decisions and they were still really hard. And I was in a place where I really wanted somebody to help me be proactive and move me forward now. Only I couldn't, I didn't know that there was anybody there to do that. I didn't even know coaching existed back then. Didn't have a clue. So I just muddled on, did the best I could with the decisions of what I was dealing with at the time. And I ended up moving back over here to be with my family. And I thought, that's fine. I'm going home to the family. No worries. Only that is really a hard curveball again, because there is a real thing, as I know now, called reverse culture shock. And yep, it hit me hard. So I came back to the UK thinking that that's all right, but it wasn't all right. The place is the same, but it was different. The, my f- close friends that I reconnected with were the same, but they were different. And I had lived for years in New Zealand and been accustomed to that culture and the way of life. And what I'd come back to was, whoa, so different. And I just thought, whoa. And I was scared that I was going to fall back down into this black hole again. And I didn't have my counselor, my, my little angel. And you know what? I just sat there and I thought, well, you've got two ways to look at this girl. You either go down that black hole again or you see it as a blank canvas and you just go, I'm just going to reinvent my life. I've been given this opportunity. So I chose to see it as an opportunity. And I started looking at, well, I'm going to be that type of person that I wanted to have help me. And that opened up my life, research, 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 opened up my life of seeing that there is a world called coaching. And I was hooked from the moment I seen that, I was like, oh my giddy aunt, if I knew that that was there back then, but then I still thought, but hey, there isn't somebody there who knows that particular story because it's kind of life coaching, but at the same breath, there is that extra layer that I think a lot of people can relate with certain things that people go through that for people who've never relocated, it is really, really hard for them to truly understand what it's like for the person that does relocate. There's a different layer of life in there and you kind of have to walk it or live it to really get it and understand it. And so then that was my second ray of hope of the fact that, well, I just became that person that I needed back then because I just want to help other people not to feel that they have to just plod along and blunder and wonder what if. And, you know, you just never know what's your, where your journey is going to take you. You know, it took me on a path that I would never have dreamed of. And yeah, it was pretty bumpy, but hey, I'm here. It's all good. I don't think a lot of people realize how traumatic it can be for your entire family sometimes when you move. For me, it was always an adventure, right? I was like, oh my gosh, a place to start over, a, a new fresh, you know, everything. But for the rest of my family, it wasn't. It was like, I have to learn to fit in again. I have to find mm-hmm. a new group of friends, new schools, new jobs. And it can be like overwhelming for some people and their entire family. Absolutely. And, and there is an element to, um, and I know a lot of people will just be nodding their heads, I like guess if it's going to fall off the neck when I say this, that you create this perfect persona when you're away as well. You know, you might be feeling down, and you think, oh, I'll ring my family because I miss them. And you do. And saying, how are you getting on? Oh, I'm fine. Everything's cool. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's all good. You know, and you just, you're so, you feel so guilty that you have broken the hearts of your parents, for example, to go on the other side of the world. So you, you've got to, you feel you need to counterbalance that by saying, look, it's worth it, mom and dad, because it's so cool here. Whereas really, you're just like, I'm just so missing you and I want to come home. And even though you won't go home, but you just want to say, you want to feel like that seven-year-old, yeah? I just really want to come home, mom, you know? And yet your parents kind of go with the idea of like kind of keeping you buoyant. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Even though they may secretly sense that you're, because the parents, right? Parents know their kids inside out. So, you know, they might be like, I'm not sure if she really is like as excited as what she's saying, but everybody has to put on this persona to try and keep you buoyant. And it's the world's worst thing to do, but we naturally do it. We naturally try, because whenever you go out and say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. 
it's a classic, I'm fine. It's like, well, how are you doing? And as a coaching trick, as you well know, you like ask it three times and then you really start to get to find out how people really are feeling. And if they are feeling great, fantastic, you know? But a lot of the times people say they're fine when they're not really fine. I love that you talk about reverse culture shock because it's a thing. And I know that, so for instance, we go to college and we're excited. We're getting out on our own. We're in college. Mm -hmm. We're adults. And yet when we get there, we're homesick. You know, we miss what was normal to us, our usual, our habits. And then we finish college and we go home. We go back home and thinking this is our safe spot. This, I know this place, but you're miserable because you've become an adult. You've changed. Yes. And it's yes. super hard to go home. You're like, why is this so challenging for me? Because this isn't my place anymore, right? I've yes. outgrown it. So I love that you talk about reverse culture shock because I think people feel in their heads they can always go back to what was good before mm -hmm. and everything will be okay. But you're coming back there as someone different because you've had a new experience and you've grown in that. And it's not the same. And you're sad. Like I remember going home thinking, why am I so miserable? I have everything, <laughs> but I don't want to be in my parents' home right now. <laughs> yeah. Cause it also has this feeling of going backwards. Like in a weird sense, like you failed at something, you know, because I sure as hell felt that when, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was one of the things that I really struggled with when I was away was being so far away from my family. Cause I'm very close to my family. And that had always been a, a, um, a bit of a thing to carry with me to try and cope with not being near family. But I also knew, I also had in my head this feeling that coming back was a sense of I failed. You know, I failed at my relationship. I failed at not build, you know, building a life out in New Zealand where I love dearly and I still do to this day. Um, you know, there was all this feeling of it's wrong. And yet it was actually the right thing to do because I wasn't coming back because you can't go back, right? It's, that's right. the past. You can't go back to it. So it was like, A, I learned that, well, it's, I'm not going back to anything because it's impossible, so I'm moving forward. B, it, there is no such, such thing as failure. It's a learning. And who's to say that this is forever anyway? It's just now. And that is definitely part of my psyche because I have been traveling. I've been uh, relocating since I was, I think my first relocation was nine years of age. So it's kind of in a way so it's been in the blood and my parents, of course, of Irish stock had moved over to England in the sixties and stuff. And, you know, so the moving around has kind of always been in the blood, I guess, to some degree. So, I mean, it's just for now, right? It's nothing's permanent. Who knows what's around the corner? How exciting. <laughs> That's a beautiful way to look at it. Let's talk a little bit about COVID because I don't know how it is where you're at, but in the U.S., a lot of people are getting displaced and they're being literally forced to make decisions and changes in their lives and yeah. make those moves. What are some tips that they can work on to not let that get like get on top of them and start weighing them down? I mean, like you said, it's not forever. It's just for now. And yeah. who knows what gem you're going to pull out of that space you're moving into, even if it's for a brief amount of time. But what are some of the tips that you would give people right now? Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for that question. Because it's really, it is very poignant with, you know, yes, my specialization is in relocation. Yet, the things that people feel when they're relocating is when you stop to actually just think about it, COVID-19 globally, apart from has massively affected people because when you think relocation, you think getting on an airplane, moving to the other side of the world, right? Which yes, it can be. But the actual scenario about the relocating, it's like everybody has been affected by COVID-19. A massive amount of people have been enforced to relocate to their homes, spaces that can't go to work or they can't go and see their family or so that restriction and that enforcement's been there so the feeling is very very similar to somebody who is trying to deal with the aspects of literally picking up their life going to the other side of the world and relocating so what i do say regardless of the scenario everybody's feeling a bit of this at the moment you're going to have some people who are like going Sweet as, it's a breeze. That's a New Zealand term, by the way. Sweet as, that's a breeze. And, um, you know, away we go. You're going to have some people who are saying, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. It's like, okay. And then you're going to have those people who are saying, you know what? I am not fine. 
I am totally freaking out. What is going on? And the number one thing that I say to people, I do it with my clients all of the time because your head is just racing and it's like you just don't know what to do first, is to literally stop. One of my things that I say to you is I'm, I put my hand up and I'm just going to stop you right there. Just stop. Just close your eyes. Just take three deep breaths. And every time you breathe out, you're going to keep your eyes closed and you're going to say, it's okay not to be okay. I love the power of three, by the way. That's my thing, right? So three times you do that. And then you keep your eyes closed. And for the next three deep breaths, when you're breathing out, you're going to say, I am okay. And then you're just going to open your eyes and you go, right, where were we? Let's get into this. Let's be present. Let's just enjoy the fact that you can be with your family for this time. Let's be okay with the fact that you're not expected to have to travel to go to work. And if you are a person that does have to go to work, just be okay with being responsible for yourself. That's all you can do. You cannot change the situation. You cannot change anybody else's viewpoint. All you can do is control you. And so that for COVID people, that could be people who do have to go out. I can wear a mask. I can wear a shield. I can bring san hand sanitizer. I can bring gloves. I can bring a scarf to put around me. I don't care if you bring a whole backpack of stuff that's going to help you. If that helps you, just helping yourself, keep yourself safe. If you're a person that's having to stay at home, right, what things can I do at home? What's that thing that I think, oh, if I had extra time, I would do that jigsaw, but don't tell anybody I love jigsaws. Right, well, do the jigsaw, man. You're at home. Who's going to know? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's just to be at peace with what is right in front of you. That's the number one tip is to breathe, stop, protect yourself and just be at peace with it because we're all on this roller coaster ride that has no brakes on it at least we're collectively together on that roller coaster ride there's not one person on their own doing it eh? i know a lot of my clients are fearful like when i talk to them about what their emotions are it's fear like when is this going to end how is it going to get worse is it coming back around like there's all these fears that they're as moms or employers are all concerned about the people they're responsible for. And all I can do is tell them, you have no control over what happens. None. Mm -hmm. Like, so stop worrying about it because all the worry in the world is not going to give you control over the outcome. So all you can do is take each moment and what can I do today for my family to make sure they're okay for myself. And those are perfect ideas. Again, if you have to walk in with a backpack full of stuff and that makes you feel comfortable and safe, you do it. Do yeah. what you have control over. Like we haven't had anyone in our house. This is so weird since February or March, because I haven't been comfortable letting people come in because my husband is a doctor and, you know, he yeah. interacts with people every day and I want to keep them safe as well as keeping everyone in the house safe, which is very weird. If people knew me, like I'm like, come on in to the neighbors or the mailman, yeah. you know, it's oh, totally Jenna. a different place for me. I'm a hugger. I am a hugger. I meet people for the first time and I have to restrain myself and like shake their hand because I've never met these people, right? But that's the only time I would ever shake a person's hand is when I've literally never met them before. After that, I'd be hugging them. I'd be like, lovely to see you. And whoa, it is really hard when you're a hugger that you can't go out there and do the hugging. Yeah. Like the hardest, so I, I feel it. The hardest situation for me was when we got together with our grandkids and the littlest run came in a dead run because they live in Colorado and they don't see us off to give me a big hug and then everyone's like no and I'm like are you kidding get over here because honestly I live for your hugs if I can't have your hugs I don't have a life anyway so you just get over here okay. she doesn't understand she's only three and I don't want her to have that I don't want that mind block put into her head about touching and hugging and and agreed Right. And I know that I'm safe. So I'm totally okay with her coming. I wouldn't want her going hugging every stranger, but mm -hmm. I totally thought, how, are, how are we affecting our children going into our little ones. decade? Right. They're going to wash their yeah. hands like crazy, not six feet apart, like not worry about how people are, you know, breathing around them. How is this going to affect their normal day-to-day -day life in 10 years? 
I know it does it does concern me but you know what again with what we do for a trade I, I do feel blessed that I can fall back on those kind of <clears throat> excuse me on those like thought processes about it and it's like you know I've I've got a couple of nieces <laughs> I think, I think to be honest with you, Jan, I think it was myself and my sister that was more devastated than anybody, but it was my little niece's fifth birthday the other week. And I'm like second mom to these kids. Right. And I, we've not seen them since I've not seen them since middle March. So I'm hanging out now at this point. Yeah. So um, myself, and my sister had made this quiet shush. We won't tell the little one, um, but I'll turn up for her birthday, you know, like surprise. And your mom's here. And she and even my sister, the night uh, the day before my sister was texting, she goes, She is just gonna freak. Like, like we were just beyond, we were like two little girls ourselves, so excited. And then literally that evening, um local lockdowns came down in this area because the um <clears throat> the cases had risen. So that meant that I wasn't allowed to travel because she lives uh, up in Scotland, so it's like about a four-hour drive away. So I wasn't allowed to travel and go up and see her. And luckily we decided not to tell my niece. We would just leave just in case. Well, you know, to be honest with you, the, my little niece probably would have got over it far quicker than myself and my sister because we were just devastated. It was like, who <laughs> just wanted to be together with the family, you know? But I think, I think the irony is with that story is we worry so much about how the children will handle it. And I think what you'll find is that the children will actually handle it a lot better than those adults with will. I think they will bounce back. I think they will be like, yeah, that's a bit strange, but hi. And they will move on when it's okay to hug again. They will quickly move on and they'll be hugging again because it's just another change, right? It's not a forever. It's just another change. And I think it's those adults that add the extra layers of worries on top of things more so than what children sometimes do. Don't get me wrong. I know children do worry, but I think as adults, we put more layers to that than perhaps needs to be, you know, because we just want to protect the little ones. And that means trying to like work out what's happening in the future, right? Which nobody can do that because nobody has a crystal ball. Well, I do, but it's in the shop getting fixed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, um, Yvonne, where can people locate you if they want to connect with you? Because I know, like, right now, there's change in everyone's life in some way or another. And a lot of that is forced, you know, to have to relocate or make changes. A lot of that is just stuff that you're doing because opportunities came up. But you should be able to enjoy every moment of it. So you want to meet somebody like, like Yvonne to do that. Where can they meet you? Cool. So <clears throat> I am kind of in different parts of social media so I have my own website and and anything that I'm mentioning right now if you just keyed in YMR coaching so YMR is actually the initials of my name so it's Yvonne Marie Rosny so YMR coaching and development will just bring up anything so I have my own website and I've got blogs on there and um you know ways that you can connect with me and how I can help and I'm on LinkedIn uh, Instagram and Facebook so, you know, wherever your favorite place is, just pop in YMR Coaching and, and you'll come across me for sure. Um, my website has most of my blogs on there. I've got one actually that I think may help people at the moment. And even though it's, it's called Relocation Fears, but um, even though it says Relocation Fears, it's actually quite relevant to what everybody's going through right now. Um, so I think maybe if that's okay, we could just put that on there for people to connect to that. Um, I think would be quite helpful. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, you know me, Jana, like in any way that it connects, it's fine. If people prefer to ring me or text me, that's cool. You know, I can video chat people on WhatsApp and Zoom and Skype and, you know, it doesn't, for the purposes of me being able to reach out with people and, and connect with people, you know, screw coronavirus. Like it is not going to stop me having a conversation with somebody. We can do that online, everybody. You know, I can still be your support person. Sometimes I had a lady on, on to me the other day who was just totally freaking out, bless her, because she was stranded because of coronavirus in a particular country. And she was wanting to start a new life in somewhere else, but she had to go home first to sort out her stuff, right? And she was stranded in this 
third country and she was like I don't want to be here and she was on her own and she was just totally freaking out and it just took one session with me we just sat down and I said girlfriend let it out tell me what's going on and just for her to get it outside of her head to somebody allowed her to go oh hang on a minute so what I need to do first is this and this and this and I'm like yep yeah, you got it and then I was just that contact for her because of course everything was very fluid she would made a plan flights were getting cancelled and she was but I was there and that's all somebody really needs so even though people were in transition I could be there I would send a message saying what's happening where are you you've got this it's all good you know and sometimes people just need that it doesn't make them weak it just it just means that somebody needs that person who's not in the middle of that emotion to be able to go hey yeah that's fine or I'll walk with you or basically to tell people to stop because sometimes that mind can just race. So whether it's just a thought process or they're in the middle of it, or the other thing is when people have just arrived at a new place and they had all these great plans of how they were going to integrate in the new community, only they've not been able to do that because they've been stranded indoors for the last four or five months. It's like, right, well, you can still get in touch with me and we can still because I can look outside of the square, right? And I can go, right, let's sit down and let's see what is workable. Because we can only manage what we can manage and everything else will just pan out. By the way, everybody needs that in their life. When you think about when your toddler's learning to walk and they fall and get hurt and they bump their head and they keep falling, yeah. what do you do? Like, you're like, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, you could do this. And yeah, that's brush it off. Right. That's all we all need. And they, we all mastered walking, right? I say this all the time on the show, but we all mastered walking. No one gave up and said, you know what? This is too hard. I'm not doing it. We just did it. So it's the same when you have someone like that in your corner that helps you like hear what's going on in your head because you're saying it out loud, like puts that mirror up when you realize, oh my goodness, you're right. I can't control that, but I can do these things. And you yeah. just feel like you're in control again and everything's, you know, you make a plan. Sometimes those plans don't work, but that's okay. You learn to pivot and there's a better yeah. plan, right? Yeah. 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 Plan A never. I mean, plan A works out how boring is life, quite frankly, right? right? <laughs> Sometimes I, my plan I have plans and E's were the best yeah. plans, right? They improved on plan A. <laughs> I was just going to say that. I usually have at least plan D in yeah. the pipeline somewhere along the line for sure. Yeah. Well, Bon, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really adore you. She's going to be writing for us too in um, Best Holistic Life. So I'm really excited for the next issue in September. But we're going to put all her links in the show notes as well as that blog link because I am 100% about giving education out as, as much as possible because what? We're teaching you to fish. So we're not feeding you. You're learning to feed yourself. And so I want you to have access to amazing information like that. So thank you so much, Yvonne. Thank you so much, Jenna. It's been an absolute pleasure and I can't wait to keep working with you and I'm well excited myself for the magazine coming out. <laughs>